Today, I'm joined by Matt Struthers, who is a crop extension specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture within the government of Saskatchewan. Now, I know it's only December, but looking forward towards next spring, how much moisture are farmers going to need? So we need um, as much snow as we can get. Um, for the biggest reason is to refill dugouts and any other surface water or any surface water body that uh, you know livestock are going to utilize next next year. We we struggled all season long uh, with supplying uh, water to livestock, and going into 2022, we really need a, a replenishment of our of our water sources in that capacity, or or uh, livestock producers will be in even a harder bind. So, uh, you know, for the crop side of things. I was hoping for a good rain in the fall uh, before the ground froze, even though it's so dry out there, it probably likely won't freeze. Um, so, you know, if we got that moisture in the fall, it would have, uh, you know, let the ground freeze. Uh, the moisture is trapped there. We get a good dump of snow. We don't get any wind. Uh, and then come springtime, we, uh, um, and, you know, we, we have the runoff and, the, and, and we're all just ready for the springtime. But I don't have the exact, you know, amount off the top of my head what we need, I would say we take as much as we can get it uh, in a in a lengthy period of time. We don't all we don't want to want it uh, in all in one day, um, kind of like what we saw in BC, right? You know that was a lot of water in in two or three days, and it was it was way too much. So we don't want that here. We want you know, over that a good period of time, and then uh, then we should be good. And I'll take as much as we can get, but of course we don't want to uh, you know have a flood season either. So. Yeah, and, and just our luck, that'll be exactly what happens. Now, I'm wondering, you know, ski hills, they, they cover up snow to, to help maintain it for when the spring comes. Is, is that something that farmers could do, or are there any type of mitigation practices that farmers could take? Uh, other than your, your field management, you know, if you're tilling, of course, you're going to be, uh, you know, the, the more you disturb your soil during the, the spring, summer, and fall, uh, the more moisture you're just going to dissipate into the atmosphere. Um, you know, stubble management, residue management, all those things. But of course, that's not a winter activity. Um, yeah, it would be kind of interesting to see if anyone tarped uh, their fields uh, to see. Um, but just like logistically, that's impossible. And, and the cost would be crazy. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe one day the technology will come along that we can uh, make ice machines or snow machines for every field. But unfortunately, that's, that's not possible. I, and I mean, they could, um, you know, snow fencing is, is, um, an option uh, for some people if, if that's an expense that they can afford and some capacity of course you're not going to fence every every uh, field that um, that you need it at um, but of course some people use just you know snow fencing here and there and, and do the best they can but um, unfortunately you kind of throw your hands up and, and hope for the best and, and just as you were speaking there I was thinking you know what if they packed dirt over the snow uh, might that help yeah, maybe if you if you were able to, you know, if there's a snowpack and then you went over with uh, maybe if you had crop residue or or something like that, maybe um, maybe some soil that you're able to to agitate and get out of there and, and then break up and, and spread. That's a possibility. It might be able to hold some of it down. But at the same time, if you're spreading um, soil uh, that's been broken up and, and loosened um, come any large spring or any wind, sorry, in the spring, uh, you know, that topsoil will be carried off just like it would be if you're tilling it. So, um, you know, there's always, unfortunately, there's pros and cons to the whole, the whole thing. And, and uh, yeah, it's just, just one of those things, moisture, the one thing we can't control, but we need the most. I keep trying to find an angle that that might help farmers retain some moisture, but ironically, I keep coming up dry. It, uh, it would be really nice. I mean, the one thing that I would really like to see actually is, um, uh, you know, like shelter, shelter belts play a huge role, right, in, in moisture retention and, and conserving your moisture, not only during uh, the growing season, but also in the wintertime. I would love to see, um, you know, the stoppage of, of tearing down and burning shelter belts and, and maybe see a resurgence of, of planting shelter belts instead of taking them down or maybe redesigning how we, how we go about that so we can, you know, protect our soils but also conserve our moisture. Perfect. There we go. I've got at least one tip that might uh, help farmers retain some moisture. Unfortunately, not this year, but maybe in, in future years. Matt, thank you so much for chatting with me today. You too, and a Merry Christmas.